Let's face it, national pride is polarizing AF. From throwing an alt-right rally on your university campus to saying Happy Canada Day. How people express their pride ranges widely. But let's not lump together screaming bigots and families looking to belong. Then why do we have only one word for patriotism? It means barbecue and beer one day and erasure and assault the next. When did one word start meaning two drastically different things? When everything went to shit. And in the Trump era and colonial memory loss Canada, does practicing patriotism really make sense? Should you be proud of your country? No. That was rhetorical. Join in on the conversation on Twitter and Facebook. And all together now, let's think about it. Let's start with the word itself. When we think of patriotism, it tends to bring up some very specific images. Or, you know. Hey, where the hell did you get that? But that's just one side of things. Just like how this patriotism bears no resemblance to this. Luckily, we're not the first to realize that using one word to lump all these people together makes about as much sense as assuming Trump's version of a taco bowl has anything to do with tacos. If that's what he thinks the taco stands on every corner are serving, I think I finally get why he's racist. For the sake of our sanity and stomachs, it's good to get specific, which is why political psychology split patriotism in two, blind patriotism and constructive patriotism. Let's start with blind patriotism. Is the attachment to your country expressed by unquestioning support, allegiance, and intolerance of criticism? And more often than not, change that threatens patriots or the concept of their country in any way. This tends to bleed over into politics, bringing us back to these guys. Suddenly, patriotism becomes loyalty to the one in charge of the country. If the person I support is in office, the country will be good, and if anyone questions that, they're against my person and my country. This unwavering support also means people who practice blind patriotism are not big on reflecting on the country's mistakes, past or present. Calling anyone or anything racist means you're insulting the country. And reminding them of that thing that happened a while ago. What was it again? Oh yeah, slavery. Or anti-Semitism. It's easy for the Nazis to resurface when no one wants to acknowledge what happened in the first place. In fact, the Unite the Right rally that rioted in Charlottesville started as a meeting of right-wing patriot groups. Groups that support Trump, a man who famously refused to acknowledge the Jewish people on Holocaust Remembrance Day. You know you're a true patriot when you decide to ignore genocide. Let's not forget, even if they'd like us to, about colonialism. It is, after all, Canada 150. Because no one was here more than 150 years ago, aside from, you know, the indigenous communities the colonizers killed, raped, and forced into residential schools. But it's fun, right? There are things about Canada to celebrate, so why not throw a few events and feel some pride? Maybe because Canada is spending $500 million on the celebrations. Money that could be better spent on, I don't know, efforts to protect missing and murdered indigenous women, suicide crisis in residential communities, and residential school reparations. Canada 150 is like Justin Trudeau's Haida tattoo. At first glance, it may seem woke and informed, but in the end, it's kind of racist, which is just like racism, but less calories. If you're an American and you say you're a patriot, the automatic assumption has become that you're pro-Trump. And if you're a Canadian patriot, suddenly you're not allowed to examine the issues within our government. Remember those pipelines? Apparently, we're supposed to forget about them. The assumption that blind patriotism is the only kind of patriotism is very constricting. Either you're an ignorant idiot or you're an anarchist with no in between. You're either with us or against us. It's an impossible situation. I don't think I know anyone who would call themselves a patriot right now. I do. What? I do, my parents. They're immigrants who fought to get here and now they're proud to be Canadian. And they're open about it? Oh, you'll never hear two people talk more about how happy they are to be someplace. Canada this and Canada that. Have you seen that young Trudeau man in the Times magazine? And we have lots of friends in immigrant communities who may not be quite as loud as my parents, but they wear their patriotism as a shield. I live in a really gentrified neighborhood, and the racism and xenophobia is pretty passive aggressive. But after 9-11, family friends of ours had their shop vandalized at night. Someone had even shattered the windows with a brick. After that, it was maple leaves as far as the eye can see. And if you have a Canadian flag hanging in your shop window, it's a little less likely someone is going to assume you're a terrorist. Wow, I'm sorry. 
Yeah, and I'm sure the people who destroyed that shop thought they were patriots too. And that's way too common. The number of hate crimes targeting Muslims in Canada has gone up 253% since 2012. And that's only the ones reported to police. Pretending that these things only happen in the States and not in Canada only makes things worse. We can't ignore these realities. No, we can't. We have to work to make a new reality and fight against our country's injustices, past and present. Constructive patriotism. Yeah, that. Patriotism, people express by questioning and criticizing their country to make it a better place to live, like Canada 150. There's been widespread criticism from posters calling out uh, support of colonial genocide to people in the news and media being openly critical, like us. There are multiple large-scale efforts to resist, like hashtag resistance150, created by members of the Anishinaabe, Michif, Cree, and Métis tribes. Protesters put up a teepee on Parliament Hill for Canada Day on rightly Algonquin land, and they received more coverage than most of the celebrations have. And according to a public affairs poll, 70% of Canadians think Ottawa is spending too much money on Canada 150. Our government is coming off as out of touch with its people, a lot of whom didn't even want the celebration to begin with. As for the U.S. of A, there was a serious lack of giant migration from the States to Canada when Trump was elected, even though most Canadian tourism websites crashed the night of the election. The follow-through has been pretty unnoticeable. People had the chance to get out, but most of them decided to stay and fight. Thousands put themselves on the line daily to support black lives, trans lives, immigrant lives, standing face to face with bigots, nationalists, and Nazis to show them what true patriotism looks like. Activism can be a key part of constructive patriotism. We really need to be public about it and meet other people who can help work towards positive change. And whether it happens or not, more and more people are calling for the impeachment of Trump and telling the world that one yellow dye job gerbil does not represent the country they are proud to be a part of. In Canada, we have a lot to be proud of. But you can't just walk up to our colonial past, shout, free healthcare, throw a beaver at it, and think everything is fine. It's not. Canada still mistreats its indigenous communities. Racism and systematic violence is a very real concern, and just because we hosted World Pride once, does not mean everyone is accepting of queer and trans communities. A lot of our big events seem to be more for the rest of the world than us. Here, look how great and progressive we are. Maybe other people think we're perfect, but I think the citizens have smartened up and are trying to do something about it. So now what? I mean, it's not like every time someone hears the word patriotism, they're gonna ask, blind or constructive? Probably not. It's still a really charged word. I think it's about using it carefully and letting people know what you mean when you say it. The sooner people get it that it can mean different things for different people, the less isolating it'll be for people like my parents. They're smart, they know their country has problems, but that doesn't mean that they're not proud to be here. And that shouldn't be something to be ashamed of. Families new to a country shouldn't have to negotiate the politics of how to express their love for their new home on the list of things to worry about. It's like blind patriots are in a bad relationship. Whatever bad thing their country does, they forgive it and even support it. They let things get worse and worse without questioning it. But constructive patriots call the country out when they mess up. And rather than accepting that's how it is, they work on it. When you think about it, activists and changemakers are the most patriotic people. I mean, they're constantly using physical and emotional labor to make their country better. What shows more love and pride than that? That's actually really sweet. In the spirit of making things better, I think it's time we maybe discuss like my weight. So, the next time you hear someone say they're patriotic, try not to let your mind fly directly to images of beer bellies, white guys, and fireworks. Take a second and really think about it. <laughs>